Are you a fitness girlie who want to progress and thrive in the gym while eating plant-based? Or do you want to eat more plants but not sure where to start? I've got you. When I started eating less meat in 2022 and I've completely become vegetarian for almost a year now, one of the things that people suddenly started concerned about my diet is protein. Where do I get my protein? Do I get enough protein? How did I survive without having eaten any meat? Well bestie, let's just get comfy, grab yourself a cup of coffee, tea, matcha, because today I'm going to share with you how I managed to eat over 140 grams of protein every day while not eating any meat. I am the healthiest I've ever been, thrive in the gym, do a lot of muscle this year while eating plant-based. Welcome and welcome back to another Veggie Diaries where I share my thoughts, ideas, tips from my plant-based journey. While diet preference is up to an individual and each of our diet plays a role in each time of our life, I genuinely believe that eating more plants is one of the best things that you could do to reach optimal health and well-being and also one of the solutions to tackle climate crisis. But I want this corner of my channel to be a safe space that we can exchange the viewpoints on certain aspects of our diet. Without further ado, let's jump right into today's video. Everyone talks a lot about protein. It almost sounds like a hype, like everything has to be high protein. One of the most concerns that people do have when it comes to plant-based diet is where do I get protein? The plant-based um, protein sources I categorize into three categories, beans, legumes, and soy-based ingredients. While beans and legumes are technically carb sources because they actually contain more carbs than protein, but comparing to other carb sources, beans and legumes also contain higher amount in protein. I eat beans, soybeans or legumes basically every day, alternate between each type of the beans. Black beans, red beans, chickpeas, lentils, edamame, you know, the list go on. Soybean is basically the key ingredients of tofu, tempeh, seitan, soy chunks, corn mince, which is technically not soy based, but I would try to like put into this category and this is something that I have on regular basis as well. If you're a noodle or pasta lover, you know, durum wheat pasta, gluten-free pasta that made from chickpea flour or peas flour, buckwheat, you might associate it as in a form of soba noodle from Japan. There are also ingredients that you can look at to get more proteins into your diet. The next part is kind of more like vegetarian protein sources. If you eliminate all of the meat, and animal products. Feel free to skip this part. One of the most nutrient dense whole food ingredients um, that you can get is eggs, egg white specifically. Egg is my protein staple that I have pretty much every day. I love eggs and I grew up eating eggs every day. And there is something special about having eggs on top of any other dishes. It's like a sherry on top for Thai people for some reasons. We just love so much to add eggs on top of anything. Eggs are also versatile because you can make it savory, you can make it sweet. Dairy products are also one of the good protein sources that you can have on daily basis. Obviously, if you are lactose intolerant girlies, then obviously feel free to just like ignore this part. Hard cheeses, for example, Gouda, Parmesan, Cheddar cheese are very high in protein and also in calcium. Soft cheese, for example, cottage cheese, quark are also the staples that I have. Greek yogurt or kefir, as you know, they are the love of my life. I have yogurt every day. Not only they provide higher protein content, they are also considered as you know fermented ingredients. It contains good bacteria that will feed into your gut microbiome, gut microbiome to improve your overall digestions and gut health in overall. Lastly, but not least, for the protein sources, pretty much still debatable. Protein powder, I think it comes very handy, especially when you're short on time. It is a supplement. It's not a main meal. I have protein powder every day now that I committed to build more muscle. I want to make sure that I stick to my goal and progress. I also prefer to have vegan um, protein powder because whey protein powder doesn't work so well with my stomach. So that is something that you can look into despite the texture of the vegan protein powder as we may know. Basically, you can't replace it as a whole meal. Protein powder is very convenient for you, not just to help you 
hit the protein goal that you need for the day but also to help you sustain the volume i will explain on that later on now that we know about what are the protein sources that we can eat on plant-based diet the next thing is for us to understand the plant protein beans legumes tofu as i previously mentioned earlier that they don't contain just protein beans and legumes specifically they contain more carbs than protein so some might argue that did you know that it contains carb yes they contain carbs, but they also contain higher protein content than other carb sources like potatoes or sweet potato. And I'm not here to fear monger you that beans and legumes aren't great for protein, but it is something that maybe you have to be a little bit more mindful, especially if you are gym girlies and you are following specific goals. If you're someone who needing to control your carbs intakes, this is something that you have to be aware of and what i learned um, so far is that the way that our body absorbs and extracts protein from these sources might not be as 100 percent the same way that your body would extract it from animal products meat are pretty much like 99 percent protein like there's nothing else but when it comes to legumes you know they're more complex than that in the carbs they're protein and also a lot of fiber i think this is also one of the nuances that i heard a lot in the health and wellness and fitness space that these plant proteins aren't qualified as you know good source of protein but because they're come with fibers and vitamins i think they're you know it's almost like you have all in one kind of like ingredients it keeps you full for longer it keeps you satisfied they are also lighter for your stomach so i don't really see why they're not qualified as good source of protein or just simply a good ingredient to have in your cupboard they're much more affordable than meat like it, it is it is a bargain right how to start eating more protein especially plant protein in your diet when you make a transition from eating a lot of meat to eating more plants or to cut meat from your diet completely you can't expect to feel positive changes straight away you have to understand that she is a very routine person once you change something you will have to give her time to adjust to warm herself up to the fact that you're not eating meat anymore she's confused like give her a break you don't expect to be like all right tomorrow i'm not gonna eat meat and you better be thriving your body be like hold on a minute sis like i would say you know give yourself a couple of weeks or up to a month to let your body transition i gradually reduced my consumption of meat so i don't feel the impact as much but i also experienced some symptoms like the digestion is not there i, I was bloated a lot my bowel movement might not be as good because of these changes that happen in your life and the, the changes that you made for your body and there is obviously a caveat in terms of caloric intake that you know transitioning from eating meat to not eating meat at all plants in general have less calorie than meat lots of people reflected that they feel hungry all the time when they stop eating meat and just eating more plants but that is not because there's something wrong with plants it's just more that you're not eating enough but when you make transition towards eating plant-based you might have to consider adding more volume to your meals it may look big sometimes when i finish cooking i was like whoa this is a lot this is huge and once i finished it i was like well it's not as much as i thought it's just the volume that made you feel a bit like taking the back and that's also linked back to why i mentioned about protein powder help you sustain sustain the volume um, of the meals help me supplement the protein that i need without having to sit down and eat large amount of beans the whole day the next point is a little bit more my reflection from what people ask me or what i heard from social media overall is that plant proteins don't taste as good let's just face it any types of protein are not palatable and require the most effort and time into prepping it whether it's chicken breast steak lamb if you just simply just boil them i swear those chicken and meat don't taste great right any types of protein aren't made to be palatable to begin with they're also the hardest to eat carbs and fat are much more palatable i think in general people don't have enough protein vegan vegetarian or not let's just admit it we all grew up learned to perfecting 
how we cook those meat. It took years of experiences looking up on YouTube how to cook the perfect steak and how to season chicken very well. So you can't just say that plant proteins don't taste great when you have not spent good amount of time or equal amount of time learning how to cook them. And I'm saying this as someone who also come from a culture where meat is essential part of our like cuisine. I feel like once I say I don't eat meat, people have no idea how to replace meat with something else and how to make it taste nice when those dishes aren't originally made from beans. But once you kind of learn about it, spend some time perfecting your cooking, I can tell that beans can taste as good if not better for some dishes and I want to debunk the myth that people who eat plant-based diet don't eat enough protein. I think it's completely not true. All of these sayings that you're not getting enough protein, we actually prioritize protein and I, I mean at least for me, I prioritize protein. How do I eat over 140 grams of protein every day? I think this is very fascinating that I eat over 140 grams of protein every day and way more than when I ate meat. What I do is that I prioritize protein as in thinking firstly about protein, what would be the main protein sources in this meal for me and then I work the recipe and everything else around it. I make sure that I eat between 25 to 35 grams of protein each meal and snacks throughout the day. I will always find a way to sneak protein in as much as I can, even without seeing it. One of the great examples of sneaking proteins in in my meals is creamy pasta sauces. I blend a block of tofu with milk and some nutritional yeast and then it creates like the perfect creamiest pasta sauce that help trick your mind to not feel like you get fatigue of protein. And if you're curious about how I eat and what I actually eat in a day as a, someone who trains and someone who loves food, you might want to check this out. And I love doing what I eat in a day content and to share with you my high protein vegetarian recipes. I would be so thankful for you if you check those videos out. Thank you so much for joining my veggie diary video today. I'll see you in my next video very, very soon. Bye.